Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from my guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you listen to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the soul. That intro music is Lavender Soul. My original spiritual group consists of members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, and the song title was called Choice. Your life is a choice. It's all about what you decide, consciously or not. Your thoughts manifest, so you might as well get with the conscious, deliberate program and begin to bring those things into your life, not only from the outside world to you, but also from the inside world out. Uh, That way you can create that full circle, and then your life begins to expand, and you begin to expand, and others around you begin to expand. Welcome to the show, y'all. Center of Light Radio, the superhighway to knowledge for that which is most important. I have a fantastic show for you. I hope wherever it is you are in the world that you are warming up because it sure has been cold. Let me tell you, my producer Joe and I, uh, we talked about how cold it was here in Memphis last week, uh, which was 14 degrees. And where he's at, we talk about sub-zero temps. I just can't do that being from the south. I would have to move somewhere else. Uh, let's see. Check out my brand new website, y'all, centerofrightradio.com. I did a lot of work to it, um, a lot more to come. So uh, go there and check it out so you have access to my RPM program, my lifelong work. Fill out the subscription form next to my mugshot. <laughs> and uh, you will also receive my monthly newsletter. However, I did not put out a monthly installment this week. I've just been swamped. And if this is a precursor to how my year is going to be, I am so on fire and ready for that. Fill out that subscription form. You have access to my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life, as well as my monthly newsletter. If you are a YouTuber, which I am, it's one of my greatest resources for information. Uh, Information is power. And power is bliss and freedom. And so it, we're living in the age of technology and information. So it's out there for you to go grab. But if you sign it, that subscription form and get to that newsletter, uh, I will do a lot of the work for you. Um, speaking of YouTube, uh, if you find the Center of Light radio channel, uh, if you find a guest that you really, really like the interview from, uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Um, and also subscribe to my channel. It really helps me know what it is you're wanting from Center of Light Radio. Maybe there's a particular field that you would like to know more about. And if you put something in that comment box, it lets me begin the search for such. For example, a few months ago, uh, I was looking for time travelers. And uh, I did my intention, uh, did some inner work around it. And next thing you know, (laughs) I have time travelers who are showing up. One guy in particular I'm going to be booking really soon. His name is Kenneth Pass. Check this out. He says that when he was just a seven, eight-year-old boy, he was picked up, brought 2,000 years back by an alien race, brought 2,000 years back and lived for two years there. Um, I've been in dialogue with him and hopefully I'm going to learn a little more about him because there's a lot of people out there who are not genuine, not assume, insinuating that he isn't. But I want to filter my guests to make sure that they're going to be everything they claim to be. So uh, heads up about that. Services. I've been providing services for many years. I've been doing lots of, um, over the many years, um, speaking presentations about life-changing presentations about how to expand you. Um, your life. and But also, I've done talks about extraterrestrials, divine incarnations, and helped many, many people in my daily life, just networking with people where I live, uh, fulfill their dreams, fulfill their passions, uh, help them move into the window of what they were told as children, uh, you can't do that, go get a job. Well, my mom told me the same thing, and I ignored her, and now I'm able to live my life living my bliss as a professional musician, being a radio show host, which I did not see that coming a couple of years ago, uh, but also uh, just creating things. I get paid and I live my life to create. How wonderful is that? RPM, back a full circle, RPM program, fill out that newsletter. Uh, I will be more than happy to put this power in your hands. Um, sign that form. All right, uh, let's see. I'm going to get down to some notes. No more from Swanji Viswa Yogi yet. I had a pretty intense um, lucid experience with him the other night. So maybe that's a sign that he's coming to town. 
I think we're going to get down to sort of late radio business. To call into the show today, dial 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355. We would love to hear from you, even if it's to stop in and say hello or to ask a question of myself or my awesome guest tonight, who is Mother of Creation, a.k.a. Mother Goddess, and many other names. <laughs> well, we're going to get her on the show. Let me read you her bio. Tonight we will be discussing Love Has Won. I love the title of that. She has a phenomenal website, her and I think a few other people, and I'm sure she can enlighten us about that. And they all collectively get together, and they have they have a big fan base. Um, one of my dear friends is an absolute fan of yours, Mother Goddess. Uh, let me tell you what she says. She says, in 1975, as far as my current understanding is, I was born as the first experimental crystal child, meaning they could not program nor condition me. I have been awake all of my life, but also had to experience the human condition and go through a process of awakening. My role is to create a pathway for the ascension of the awakening consciousness of the planet. We had a 1 in 7.8 billion chance that we could be able to accomplish this, and we did. This has never occurred before in creation. I am so going to dig talking to this beautiful like this goddess. This is our fifth attempt in our history, and I've heard that before, that we have tried to bring this energy in. All higher selves participated with me. I was just a physical vessel capable of accomplishing this part of the mission. You can find more about from my guest tonight at www.lovehasone.org. Mother, goddess, mother of creation, welcome to Center of Light Radio. Thank you, Keith. It's an honor to be here with you. I just really wish I had converted my show to two hours by now because <laughs> our dialogue is going to be really, really, really cool and spicy. And I'm sure by the yeah. time we get to the end of this broadcast, I'm going to be uh, filled with that buzzing that happens. <laughs> yeah. When I look at... At your, your bio, what I just read, I've also heard that this is our numerous time of trying to get this right. But also something I read in your bio a moment ago was that we already have achieved the goal. Patricia yes. Cota Robles had said the same thing last year when she was on the show. She said it's already done. So the question I posed to her, and I'm going to pose it to you if I could, just to get a different sure. spin. Because we have accomplished it now. Is the rest of our life the story of how it all happened? Well, according to my understanding and where we're headed with all this is we're headed into unity consciousness. Um, the, the energetic space is already ready. It's just a matter of everyone connecting in and fi following their own path and destiny um, into this energy. It's just, it's energy. Does that answer it? I mean, the whole illusionary, you want to call it matrix, um, is going to come tr tumbling down. At, it is already. Because true mm. reality, love everywhere present, which is our true reality, our natural state, that energy is here and available to everybody. Yeah, you answered it fine. My mic was on mute. I couldn't grab my mouse fast enough. <laughs> so when we talk about true reality, we, we know very well that we're living in 3D and the fourth dimension is there. And we begin to ascend up the ladder and we or ascend in um, to 5D, 6D, and so forth and so on. From your life experience, from who you are, when does reality begin to actually, when are we able to start perceiving reality? On what dimension does reality begin to set and anchor itself? Because we know that 3D, it is reality. And of course, perception and judgment creates reality. I get all that. But when does one actually begin to play in true reality? At what level? And that's unlimited thought. And that level is reached when you reach full consciousness. And in order to reach full consciousness, you have to peel away all the layers of the onion from the illusion um, to get to the authentic, true self. And once you get there and you're completely present in the moment of now, your life begins expanding. People, places, things magically begin occurring. Um, magical, synchronistic events, miracles, uh, overflowing abundance overflowing and it's it's the real attraction factor 
So when we play <laughs> in mm-hmm. these lighter realities, which I love that word, I was going to quote it, but I'm not. When we play <laughs> <laughs> in these lighter realities, uh, and I've, I, I've experienced different realms and different realities, different dimensions, high level stuff, Godhead stuff. But that being mm-hmm. said, w- when you, from your experience, when you're in these realities, there's is there any physicality at all? Is there anything tangible at all in the sense of what we know as our normal senses? Or is this a completely different way of being? I would have to say it's a complete 180. You know, from my experience, what this is, and I'm actually in the 28th dimension now, um, and I can explain that, but um, Please. it's basically... <laughs> It's basically an expansion of all your senses. So, for example, you could take, if you look at all the the mediums and the psychics out there across the planet, I have all of those in one. I have them all. All of those abilities or powers or, you know. Now, on the infamous date of December 21st, 2012, I had put out information that... um, I was moving into the galactic center. Um, and, and as I moved into the galactic center, I moved into fifth dimensional frequencies. Um, I was quarantined in 2013 because the consciousness on the planet was not ready yet. And so by the time uh, we hit January of 2014, they let me out of quarantine. And I say they because I work with the galactic. They're in the etheric realm. And I have since I was a little girl. Um, but, um, so my consciousness continued to expand unbeknownst to me. I didn't even know, uh, until we hit, um, September, 2015, when the first Ascension wave energy started to hit and I jumped up into the eighth dimension. Once your consciousness goes, it it doesn't stop. It keeps expanding. You can't stop it. Right. (laughs) It just keeps going. So that's where I'm at. So as you exist in this space, what is it like? What do you see when you look at a human being, say you're out and about, and you look at someone else? Do you see the physical form? Do you see the physical form surrounded by the auric field? I mean, how is that for you? How do you perceive things and being in this state? Yeah, I see everyone in their highest light. And I, I send everybody love. Do I see them in physicality? Yes. But more so... I mean, I'm a um, in this state. It's a completely feeling state, completely heart based. Looking at your website, I noticed that you do a lot of work with Saint Germain. Yes, Saint Germain, Master Saint Germain is my buddy. He's been with me for two years. <laughs> I, I, see, I, I see God or higher beings or whatever guru I may be in communication with the same way. We have this dialogue to where we just a bunch of friends hanging out kind of thing. So I love it. My buddy, my buddy, for sure. <laughs> we can get into it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give, me a little, give me an idea of some of your work with St. Germain. What is that all about? Um, Master St. Germain really, he's just like my personal guide. He'll give me information. Um, like we do daily updates that come out and and St. Germain is very instrumental, um, as far as in the council goes. Um, um, you know, like yesterday he told, you know, to tell humanity that our, our, uh, updates have codes for them that activate certain DNA, um, in the being. Um, so he's really just, hmm, my buddy, (laughs) it's hard to, uh, you know, he'll help me if, um, if I don't see something that's out of right action, he'll let me know that something's out of right action and needs to be corrected or, um, because the, the, um, our area here has to stay the most purest consciousness, uh, state possible. So we're in the highest energies on the planet, and we're just holding the space for all of humanity to get there. So how do we go about updating ourselves? How do we go about getting new codes? I mean, we know that meditation, eating right, living right. But that all being said, are there certain mantras, certain chants, certain things that we can be doing that will help in our upgrading? I highly, highly recommend booking a session with us. I've done over 35,000 sessions 
and they're they're priceless. And the information that you get is is priceless. You can't even. Um, but that's one thing I do recommend. And uh, you can on our website, Love Has One. You can get your spiritual healing sessions. These sessions are multidimensional, um, they, and they assist you in your awakening process greatly and help you raise your vibration and help you experience more states of joy. How was it for you interacting with the outside world when you were younger and you came in endowed with these spiritual qualities, these spiritual gifts? I mean, and of course, the outside world is dictating to you what you are, what you are. <laughs> I mean, was it actually was within quite... you enough to where you had some, uh, you were centered or was it somewhat difficult for you to meander through life? Um, abs- you know, I commanded presence. Uh, around me because I've always been in my heart. I've always been in the present moment of now. I never experienced, I didn't have an ego, but I got to observe others in ego, um, in the illusion. And I spent most of my years in observation. Um, one of the things I did do is at a very young age, I became a manager of a fast food chain and I became a supervisor at 21 years old. And my idea was to put the new paradigm in my restaurant. And I did it successfully. And the new paradigm is all about, you know, walking our talk, being the example of love everywhere present. Um, So for me, my journey was I didn't tell a lot of people about what I knew. My family um, protected me a lot. Um, They kind of kept me aside because I was extremely different, very sensitive. They would notice all these magical synchronistic events happen, and they thought I was psychic. Um, by the time I was 14 years old, my parents took me aside and said, you're absolutely a genius. You're brilliant. There's nothing we can do to help you. And they let me go as an adult at 14. And I had my own company by that time anyway. Not that it mattered to you, but how did your peers see Mother Goddess? Where um, I did not have an outcast any. or I mean, yeah, what, I didn't how was that any. like? I didn't have any friends. Most of my, um, I guess, work came through my career as far as uh, interaction with people. Um, and I didn't, you know, I just was love in action. I showed people how to be love in action and how to take care of your crew people, how to take care of your customers and love people. Define that, if you would, please, because, and I ask this often of my guests, we talk about love being spiritual. That word can sometimes just be thrown around. A lot of people are under the impression that, and it is, that it's this mere sentiment that you exchange energy with a life partner. From your experience playing in the highest stratospheres, what is love the best you can possibly uh, describe yeah. that? Okay. I exper- what I experience every moment is is like, I guess the best word is making love with creation. Mm. Make, making love every moment. I love myself. I love my surrounding. I, um, it's, it's a state. It's an experience. It's a state. But for me, I've always loved myself. I've always loved others. It was, that's just something inherent. That's our, our natural state. And I use, I can tell you that I used to get people that said I wasn't from this earth. I'm like, yes, I am. (laughs) 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 Um, Because I guess as an example of someone who doesn't have an ego, who doesn't have that filter, I'm, it's like, I'm in a constant state of a childlike wonder, which is our natural state. Dig it. I love the childlike wonder. So because of this state that you're living in, these, these questions, mind you, are not to prove or get out of you anything. I'm curious because oh. our listening audience would like to know such questions as in me as a mouthpiece. I'm asking you now that you live, that you're living in this state of awareness, consciousness, this space, do you ever have fear still crop up within you and you just know how to process it and know what to do with it? Or are you living in a reality that this no longer is a possibility of coming into your frame of reference? Um, as far as me experiencing fear, that's not an experience that I have. Does it still test um, you to see if you would bite? Oh, I, I, I totally, <laughs> you know what? I've been, 
I've been tested and prodded and tested some more and tested, um, you know, uh, nothing, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. And I share with everybody in my sessions that, you know, we have two choices every moment, love or fear. And whatever we choose in that moment is what we're going to experience. So choose love. And as long as we're choosing love, we know we're going the right direction. So it seems obvious that in a past life, I would say recently, if we can incorporate maybe a little bit of linear time in there, that somehow in some recent life that you created such an awareness state about yourself, be it that you lived in India and was a guru or, or a, a Jigong master in China, whatever it was, that you brought this here with you now. Yes. Um, this came all the way back from Lemuria. Um, when Lemuria and Atlantis fell, I actually uh, ascended with the oneness energies intact because the Atlanteans were going to try to steal it and then try to misuse it to fix what they tr what they did in the first place to create the explosion. And um, so for this is our fifth try of me incarnating and trying to bring this energy in uh, for us all. And um, they killed me each time before I was able to complete it. Um, and though until this time, they did not they were not able to do anything to well, they tried, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was able to to make it through people who have an affinity for the story, the, the 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 existence of Atlantis. We've seen many articles that said Atlantis was off the coast of Florida. I've even seen articles recently that said Atlanta somewhere off the coast in the South America and so forth. I even found a new one that said somewhere off the coast near England, da, da, da. from your past life memory or from your absolute knowing, whatever you prefer, um, where was Atlantis? I would have to say it was near the Bermuda Triangle in the Florida area. Um, a lot of people get Atlantis and Lemuria confused. Uh, that was even, my next question. Thank you. Go for it. Even in the beginning, when I first was introduced to Atlantis and Lemuria, I was confused until I did my proper research and did my channel and ha had uh, Master St. Germain help me uh, validate and verify information. Um, so Atlantis was existing in 4D frequencies and Lemuria in 5D. And some Atlanteans decided to steal some technology from the Moria and use it in 4D, and it created an explosion. And that's what happened. And then um, 200,000 Lemurians were able to escape to the inner Earth portal. There were some surface beings left on the planet, and they were in a primitive state because they just went through tragedy. There was this group of beings I called in the Anunnaki. They were watching this whole thing. And they decided to land on the planet at this time and convince these primitives that they were their gods. And they disconnected the right and left brain function, which put humanity asleep in the illusion. Then they had to create a food system for themselves, which became humanity's thoughts. So fear, blame, shame, guilt, and worthiness, all of these thoughts, they programmed into humanity so that they could have a food source. And so... Humanity has been giving their power away via in the thought system for over 26,000 years now, which is now it's coming to an end. Finally. What did you mean by food source? Um, the old controllers, I call them. Some people call them the cabal. There's different names for them. The ones with all the money. Um, they created a, a way to control humanity via the thought system. So every time humanity goes into fear, it feeds them because they don't have any, they don't have a food source. They're not connected to source. Mm, I see that. So was the Atlantean experience, was that part of the, did it sink or whatever it happened, submerge itself? Was that all because, was that at the same time as we know as the Great Flood? Were those, were those uh, related? I think I think there's something in there. I, I never really looked about into the Great Flood. Um, but, you know, it was the Atlanteans that created all the uh, everything that happened and all the experiments that we see here, you know, like flies and mosquitoes. These were all came from Atlantis uh, in their experiments in uh, warfare. When you communicate with others, be it 
what we would call extraterrestrial in nature, and uh-huh. as well as just the celestials or the ultra terrestrials in nature. Is this something that you? Is there mm-hmm. any eyesight at all? Are you able to see these beings, or just, or is this just an awareness of your own self that gets called up within you, and immediately you know that you're in dialogue or communication? In other um, words, are you seeing them when you're hanging out in some galactic coffee shop having a galactic <laughs> Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, I can feel or read energy signatures. Um, I actually, I Saint Master Saint Germain has appeared to me twice here in physicality. Uh, Robin Williams, who's my other guide, um, he has appeared about five times to me. Is he still a goofball? Oh, he is a goofball. <laughs> he is my best friend. I mean, I, I don't know how I could have made it on some of this journey without him. I wouldn't have. I mean, he's really been my cheerleader. Wow, wow, wow. I'm digging it, digging it. So what, what is the collective mission, be it the celestials, be it the terrestrial, extraterrestrials, be it Robin Williams, whoever it may be, when these people come to you, and I know I'm probably sure, like me, and if you're living on this reality, these planes of existence that you say you are, um, I had to learn to close that door sometimes so I can be human for a little while. And then again, that being said, I, I'm ironically trying to ascend to a level that where I have no more humanity, so to speak. But all that being said, do you find that you have to somewhat turn this off? And are they collectively all telling you the same thing? And what would that message be for us here on the earth still? Um, I've never, tur- I don't turn it off because I completely live in the present moment. Um, there, if I, if I need a message from them, they'll telepathically send it uh, immediately. And I, I have a journal notes of over 11 years of this. Um, what would their message be? You know, their message would be, it's time to wake up humanity. Um, this, the ego illusion matrix, the pain and the suffering needs to come to an end. And, you know, as a collective, they're helping us move into balanced harmonics, which is our natural state. Since love has won, as well as Patricia Cota Robles has said, we made it, it's been done. All that yes. being said, when I posed the question, are we now living out how it happened? That being said, if the message is we need to continue to make sure we get rid of the war and the hunger and all the stuff that you somewhat paraphrased and quoted just a moment ago, um, since we're living in that state, of still not really having it together yet, but yet we've already won. Has information been passed to you about when the collective humanity will begin to experience that love has won? Well, you know, it's not happening on a collective level, but it definitely is already happening. Um, You know, and, and the most simplest way that we can share for, for, A main message to humanity is first things first, get yourselves into the present moment of now and everything else is up from there. How do we get ourselves in the present moment? We we understand that reading amazing books, as we all have, practicing meditation, practicing, you know, present where present moment awareness. How is there any tools that you can offer our listening audience? How they can become more centered and aware of the present moment, so they can begin to uh, implement that in their lives. It's not really an implementing kind of tool, but how would you suggest one can call them back to a space of center? Are you still there? I think someone was trying to call me and I wasn't sure. Yes. So um, I don't know if you heard the question. Did you hear the question? Uh, say it one more time. The question would be that. how it's not really a something you can implement outwardly, but how would you suggest one, our listening audience, for those who are new in the walk, can begin to call themselves back to their mm-hmm. center in this body so they can begin to practice an ongoing state of present moment awareness? Yes. Um, it, everything ex- exists in the thought system. So, and the ego's main role. Now, the ego is the one that's part of the problem on the planet because the ego creates disease and separation. 
And the ego's main role is to take away your joy. So the more you identify, awareness transforms into consciousness. So if you become aware of your thoughts, those thoughts that aren't real, which don't bring you joy, you can visualize a pure golden rainbow sword and to begin cutting those thought systems. And as you do that, the more the higher energies or your higher self uh, begins to come through. And when you have thoughts that bring you joy, these thoughts are from your angels, your guides, or your higher self. Thank you for saying that, because I've always known this, but it still fleeted me, and I still really didn't believe it, so to uh -huh. speak. And it's in the last few years that I realize, you know, even though we can, we always say God is good, and God is love, and God is light, and we often throw the other half in the trash. We don't see the balance or the the phoenix or the Christ that rises out of the duality, right? Because we're always discarding the dark. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, recognize, plug in, and manifest your life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you will see a subscription form. Fill it out. Not only will you receive my awesome power-packed newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. Yeah, lovehas1.org has everything, has the sessions, has our water project. We have a water project uh, going on right now where um, they are, this is an alkaline water. Um, if you were at a lake and you needed some clean water, you could put it through this filter. It'll alkaline it. Um, we've been drinking it. It's absolutely amazing. It's like drinking pure gold. Um, <laughs> I love it. Alkal alkaline water, they're saying, cures cancer. So you can find our water project. We get um, half profit of, of the sales and the, these sales money are going towards the building of the crystal schools um, because we feel that, that the children, the children's current system, school system is not supporting them. So we want to start the first crystal schools out there for the children to teach them first how to grow, how to build. Um, how to play, have dance, have fun, sing, play an instrument, paint. Um, you know, these are the things that children really need right now. Yeah, I read an article recently that said, let your kids be bored. Because in that boredom, if they don't have an excuse to look outward like the TV or the phone or whatever it is that's right. engaging them in the outside world, through said boredom, something will be born. Right. They'll pick up crayons because now they're in touch with who they really are at their essence, which could, could be an artist. Or they right. may see dad or mom's guitar laying around and they go over there and they start plunking on it, right? And Absolutely. I did remember what I was going to say, which was we were talking about the, the thoughts in your head that you said it came from your angel source or your higher self. And it's been in the last few years that I realized all the positive thoughts that you have in your head is God, is your higher self talking to you? But that being said, what about the negative thoughts as to why I use the example that we discard the dark? So I wanted to say thank you for bringing that up because, you know, if people want to hear your guidance, just listen to the nature of the thoughts that are moving through your being. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And all the Tell angels, everyone's always, they're always in communication. And yeah, but, but th th I think that's part of the quote problem because we still think that the angels are there and 
I'm here and that we're not connected and I need to connect to my angels in order to have a, a dialogue with them. But they right. are already dialoguing because they are the right. source of the fact that you're able to have positive thoughts or thought, or whole thought rather, or thoughts mm-hmm. that are all about your expansion. Yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me about your first contact ground crew team. It sounds so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I was in 2007 before I uh, remembered that I was mother of creation, mother God, which took me an 11 year process, by the way. It wasn't something that I just said, oh, yeah. Um, um, So in 2007. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and those Say above us again. are probably laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time. I know. Uh, what I, was. I was just. I just thought your first contact ground crew <laughs> team sounded so awesome. What is this about? Yes, in 2007, um, the Galactics came to me and um, basically said, "You need to start getting ready for the mission." And you're the first contact ground crew team, meaning our first interface as far as, I mean, they would call me an alien, but I'm just, I'm just like everybody else. I don't have an ego though. That's the only difference. Who are these beings? And though we mentioned that you contact or you in communication with St. Germain and a few others, but is there, do they come in groups? Do they say, Hey, we represent the Pleiades or we represent this group here or who I, are they go by the council of 12 or nine? What, who are these beings? I have different, all different ones. Master St. Germain, uh, master Robin Williams. I have a whole galactic a team, which mm-hmm. consists of Sananda, uh, M- Mr. Spock, uh, Sunat Kumara, Wayne Dyer is here. Um, he was, have, uh, is one of my absolute favorite teachers. This uh-oh. man, Wayne Dyer, has put me, I've watched many of his programs, and he's put me on my knees many, many times. Oh, gosh. When he came in the field, um, I wailed for two hours. <laughs> I was crying. I, I was so honored that he had chosen to be a part of the team. Um, he actually, his original contract wasn't to be a part of the team, but when he saw what was happening, he said, I got to be there and assist. He was just so passionate. He was so real about Absolutely. about everything he did. You know, after he got out of his uh, psychology years, when he really started moving into his own, it was like just really, really amazing. I, I loved his work. I, I wish I could have had him for selfish reasons on this show because I just would love to have met the man and be in his presence because, like I've said many times, when you're around someone who is a lumen, there is something not to be said but something Something to be felt. Um, what is the daily planetary ascension report? Is this you get through whoever comes through at that time, or is this uh, someone in particular that is um, daily coming to you, giving you uh, messages? Yeah, I get I go into council every day um, and get messages from from Robin, from uh, Saint Germain, um, or just angels, telepathic, you know, messages, uh, things like that, which we share. Um, we are at the very tip of the spiral of the ascension process. So it's the, we're at the very top. You can imagine how interesting it can be at the very top of the ascension, uh, spiral, everything that happens at the first fractal, which is where we're at happens every throughout all of the spirals along the fractal. So with the question I ask you, you maybe gave me the answer you wanted. I'm not sure if we actually reached my uh, my point of asking the question. That we are at the tip of the spiral, wherever it is we located as a, a species, a human species who... It's about us doing it individually, of course, but collectively we heard of the prophecy of heaven on earth. Yes. When is it, is there a guesstimation? In it? And if you don't want to answer because it's just so such a gray area, because we can say one thing and next thing you know, tomorrow wake up and everyone's living in bliss. Or we can say one thing and tomorrow the whole world turns to shit in a handbasket. I understand that. But from your best guess, if this is the the goal of why you, myself, people of the like are here to help elevate consciousness of humanity is there a window that this likely can can happen for everyone i feel very very 
intensely about this year. I agree and completely. When, I ent- when we entered this year, one of the messages I put out there is that this is love's year. It's time. You know, let's let's clean up our, uh, you know, let's get into the present moment of now. Let's change the inner to the outer. You know, love everywhere present. Take down illusion. Bring in new te- technologies, which we have, are which are superior to anything that is here currently. Um, you know, it's it's really that time. Enough is enough. Humanity spent twenty six thousand years in illusion, and you know the the consciousness of the Earth. And this is going to be a very challenging for some people, but hang in there with me. The consciousness that you see on Mother Earth is also my consciousness. I'm just here in physical form. So what happened is my consciousness was stolen. So that's what's happening. I, I'm getting it back and taking you guys with me home into the light for those who have chosen. Not every, This is a, a choice. Not everyone is choosing to move in out of their head and move into their heart, which is the process of the great shift of the ages we're in. Looking at the number 2017, if you add those all up, it comes up to one, which always means beginning. You yeah. know, we look out and about and we see ISIS and terrorism and government and the cabal. And I don't see all that. Yes, I can call a spade a spade. I can call it what it is. Right. I see this as the whole soup pot. Everything is being brought to the surface and the divine ladle is scooping it out by our intentions of just standing up and having enough we look at standing rock this is like i said in my interview last week this is way beyond what's happening in north dakota in the water though the water does represent life for all people i think what is happening is way beyond standing rock because people from in all different races all over the world are coming together that's the point of unity as a world and this is beginning to manifest i i see it so clearly and so that's why I often say when I do interviews, when I'm interviewed, is even a lot, lots of times on my post on social media, I'll always say, get out of the fight. Stop fighting the world. Stop fighting your relatives. Stop fighting the reality. Stop fighting with the inner dialogue. When you get out the right. fight, something else begins to, in fact, reality begins to move. Yeah. Yeah, we need, you know, moving back into caring for each other, loving each other, loving ourselves. That's our natural state. It's not anything else. Uh, Everything else is an an illusion or a projection. I love that you do work with Cryon. He was one that really changed my path. Years ago, um, when I started this walk, eh, I kind of started crawling and I started to stand up. I'd wobble and I'd fall down. And I started reading every book, shoving information into my being and processing and using it in my own way. Cryon was very integral for me, reading his first book especially and then listening to the tapes. I had oodles of tapes. I It felt like, you know, where I was going. And next thing you know, a year later, I became a conscious channel, mm-hmm. not by the conscious decision, only by asking creator to make an appearance and so forth. But I love the fact that you work with Cryon. So Cryon of Mag- Magnetic Service. Greetings right, all. Cryon of Magnetic Service. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, love it. I... I absolutely adore Crayola. I've nicknamed him Crayola. Uh, he loves- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Get Your Crayon is one of his favorite songs. He loves to dance to that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but Crayola, he, I call him that because he's got these huge rainbow wings. They're about 20 feet wide on each side. Um, and he comes in. He spent six months with me. He walked right beside me for six months. and. He had removed all my implants, and this was in 2007. Um, it took him six months to do that back in 2007. But, Way um, back when, when I was doing that cryon walk, I read in the book, if you're serious, you take this metaphorical implant, and I was still, I still had a lot of Catholic residuals. Let's keep it that way. Catholic residual energy, right? And even though I'd meditate, but going somewhere and implanting something in my body from a source that I'm not really sure of, but I sure did dig his work. So one day I had enough 
and I took the implant. I created it however the process was that he suggested in the book, and I took the implant. And I'm telling you, for three months, as said in that book, I felt somewhat depressed. I didn't feel my optimum. And one day I woke up and I felt completely different. I was not the Keith Anthony Blanchard I have always known. I would say that that process was real for me. Absolutely real. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is this a process? You did say that you had some implants. You had more than one? Well, I had, uh, he took out some negative implants that were implanted in me and then he turned on some positive ones uh, for me to help me. And it was soon after he did that, that I did wake up into full consciousness. Um, and that experience is something that's undeniable. You can't, once you get, once you're an unlimited thought, you're what, what I felt like, which was, this happened in 2007, I call it breaking the glass ceiling. And this is where my whole head just, it felt like just shattered into pieces. And this is when my pineal gland opened up into unlimited thought. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Did it feel yeah. like a glass ceiling breaking for you? Yeah, that's, that's exactly. And then my nose started bleeding, which I hadn't had a nose bleed in like eight years. So I found that very synchronistic to what I was experiencing. I'm trying to wrap, I won't say my heart, but my head, uh, my, not my head, but my heart, more into being in that experience that you are dwelling in. Because I've had those experiences often in Sleepscape, um, you, you know, Godhead experiences, high level, uh, hanging out with Ariel while he's sitting in a tree on a tree branch, whittling on an apple. <laughs> and yeah. I'm very much aware of these realities, but... Any suggestions for me how I can make this uh, anchored a little better and integrate this for me that I can actually begin to dwell in these kinds of experiences? Um, really, I feel I share a tree meditation that I feel is very, very powerful. Um, and trees are actually angels in disguise. They contain high amounts of source energy and they help us transform energy. They help us balance. They help us center. They help us ground. Uh, they help us integrate the higher self and help us dissolve any ego programming or conditioning that we have. And we do, during our sessions, we go over a checklist to identify all the progr programming and conditioning, because that was another issue that happened to humanity. These uh, old controllers, whatever you want to call them, they tried to put humanity in really, really dumbed down states under this conditioning and programming, kind of like a black spell. And how they did it was through the environments. And that was to put people in such a dumbed down state that when we came along and said, hey, it's time to wake up, let's go home into the light, into our natural state, that nobody would hear us. Um, but they did fail on that because we, it took me three years to come up with the, uh, the checklist. I three like that you said that trees or a different form of angelic energy. Years ago, mm -hmm. I remember coming to a state of, you know, listening on it. When I tell you consciousness, I don't mean the consciousness that you might be sitting wherever you are in a chair listening to this interview. I'm talking about hyper-consciousness. You're so conscious that it makes this place look like the illusion. And I'm being flown across a city, uh, created by an angel, and I look over my shoulder to, to get my wits about me, what's going on, and the angel, uh, you know, gave me that smile that you might imagine they would, and and. Throughout this city, all I see is this purple fire, and it wasn't a, a destructive fire. It was divine fire, mm, and, mm -hmm. and the angel looks at me with the intention of, okay, Keith, here we go. Hang on, and when I look to the front, I see this huge, huge, huge tree engulfed in this purple divine fire, and we flew into this tree, and when we flew into the tree, the next thing you know, we're in a high-rise apartment building. Many ten times higher than the tallest building on earth, and we're at the top, and the, all the walls of this building were made of glass, and I can see in every direction. And so fascinated by being in this place, the angel is sitting on the sofa, and I'm still just having fun that I can float. <laughs> I'm, pl I'm playing halfway in the ceiling and halfway not, and the angel pulls me down by my foot and sits me on the sofa, says, Keith, sit here for a moment. And my the phone rings. 
And the angel looks to me and says, are you going to answer that? I said, why should I? And it says, Keith, you live here. <laughs> <laughs> but I brought that up for the purpose of the fact that you said uh, trees or different forms of uh, angelic beings. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So what do we see in the future for you, even though you may not live in time? <laughs> what, can we see, what can we see in the future for you, from you? Well, we're working on, you know, bringing in the new earth. And um, I, I surrender to that mission every day. I, I've been working the past 11 years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week on behalf of humanity in this mission. So we entered, you know, last year was a year of completion, number nine. Um, so nine years I spent in a cycle and I exited out of it this, you know, 2017. Um, so I really feel the new earth is the new earth, the new story um, about all of us. And it's a love story um, that we co-create together. I see it. I, I look out and about into the world. I, I can look all across the globe. I can look as near as my hometown. I can see it in my friends. You know, we can look in people's eyes and uh -huh. everyone is yearning for something. They don't know, mind you, what it is they're yearning for, but everyone is salivating. Everyone is wanting something of a great depth, a greater meaning, a greater capacity, hence standing rock and people are standing up. But yeah, right. I can look out about and everyone is longing for something. Yeah, you know, the, the truth is, and this is documented, on December, I want to say it was December 12th of 2012, uh, the Giza Pyramid came online all of a sudden, mysteriously. All these lights turned on on the Giza Pyramid. Well, the Giza Pyramid is connected to all the other pyramids across the planet, it, and it creates a broadcast system signal. It's invisible. Um, to the ego, but this soul, this broadcast symbol or um, signal has been going to everybody's soul since this date of 2012. It's basically a wake-up call to everybody. What happens to a person who is not ready to process such information? Well, you know, there's a lot of different information out there about what's going to happen. You know, if, if you don't want to be loved, the love that you are, and choose love, and you want to, you have more lessons to learn. Everything, everybody gets to make their choice. They need to learn more lessons, then they get the experience of learning more lessons so that they can understand love. Um, so there could possibly be a de-evolving, uh, where they de-evolve so that they can go back and get all their lessons they need to really understand who they are, which is love. I have always said that as love energy begins to exponentiate, increase, and elevate on this earth, because that is the direction we're going, I'm absolutely convinced the mission is going to be complete. Um, yeah. All that being said, if, for example, the, the point that you just made, if we're all getting different units of information, and that those units of information represent higher frequency, higher vibration, higher reality. If it's not something you choose, because we do have choice, right. if it's something that we're not choosing, there can come a time in your life that the reflection of what you see on the outside world, which is your inner self, may become so big that you will not be able to balance it and can check yourself off of this planet, which is moving in the direction of love. And if you're not choosing it, then it makes sense that one may be in a car accident or create an illness on some level they don't even understand as a way of exiting this world. Right, right. I mean, this the journey of this is not for the weak. Um, this, the Ascension journey it's is for the meek. <laughs> yeah, but it, it requires, yeah, it requires a lot of courage. It requires a lot of perseverance, um, of, you know, not giving up the attitude of not giving up, keeping going, um, and having the strength to do that and, and serve love and be love on a planet, which is mostly, um, an ego and don't even know it. I, I like that we're closing up the show with the word love again. And as you and I discussed, and I posed the question to you, what is love? For me, love is about allowing. 
It's about non-judgment. Absolutely. It's about accepting. It's about appreciating. Yeah. If you can remember those three A's, I yep. allow, I accept, and I appreciate, that will keep you in the vibration of love because love is not really, I have a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and it is, but right. it, it it's so much deeper and richer and broader than that. In fact, it's so mm-hmm. broad and deep. It goes from what you think love is and our finite mind all the way down to your essence, which is the, the absolution of it. And so I think that love, if we can begin to accept, allow, and appreciate, that will hold us steadfastly in the vibration because it's not about judgment. What we see on the outside is not real. It's all a projection of what we think. Yes? Yes. Correct. And I do want to... Go ahead, dear. Yeah, go ahead. I do want to mention that gratitude is our highest form of energy utilization. Be grateful for everything, and you, you'll you live in bliss every moment. And I, I say bliss, my meaning of bliss is being love and simple service. I totally agreed. When I'm in that place of doing things for others, I get a charge. I get a ride yeah. every time I do this radio show. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love the feedback. And, you know, people can say, well, Keith, that's just a stroke of ego. Well, yeah, I, I can take that. I can take that pop on the chin. I'm all right with that. But I tell you what, the rewards for that. Or just monumental. We have a few minutes left. Is there a final thought? Give me a, a minute of something you would like to lift, leave with our listening audience that may lift them up who could use such things. Yeah, you know, remember, don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. And all we've got is this present moment of now. And, and humanity has been conditioned to think about the future, worry about the future, think about the past, and worry about the past. And that's not real. Uh, only the present moment of, of now is real. And in the present moment of now, this is where the energies of love and the energies of the unknowable come together to create grander experiences of joy. That's why we're really here on this planet, to experience joy. And whatever brings you joy uh, is always right action. If it doesn't bring you joy, why are you doing it? You got to dig that. That's my whole gig right there. <laughs> Is, is, you know, when you are beating your feet or living in your bliss, if God is love, when you do what you love, it makes sense to me. You are living your life on purpose. What a wonderful guest you were here on Center of Hello. Light Radio, Mother Goddess. I appreciate your presence. Thank you. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. That door swings open to you anytime. Please come back. Oh, absolutely. Would love it. You just let me know when. <laughs> uh, you bet everyone, Mother Goddess here in Center of Light Radio. What a phenomenal show. I really love her, her spunk. I love what she stands for. I love what she's doing to help all of us move to another level of reality. Next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest is going to be Karen Tate, and we're going to be speaking about Goddess Spirituality Advances Humanity. Wow, here we go again, helping and assisting humanity. I look forward to seeing you here on Center of Light Radio, Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I am the captain sitting in this chair, conducting all the affairs of the heart, wishing you a blissful, gorgeous evening and a wonderful week. Beat your feet towards your bliss. What else is there? Peace, love, and light to you. 